Located in the Himalayas, the King of the Mountains impressively shows us the elemental force of the natural giants. This is Mount Everest. Many mountaineers have already tried to conquer the 8,848-meter-high massive. Quite a few ultimately paid for the ascent with their lives. Today we would like to join you in looking at some unique incidents and discoveries at the highest mountain on Earth. But before we start, we have a quick question for you. What sad similarities do Mount Everest and the Mariana Trench have in common? Leave us a like and subscribe and let us know your guesses in the comments below. Also, stick around until the end to hear one of the craziest facts about this natural giant. Maurice Wilson In the early 1930s, Brit Maurice Wilson fell ill with tuberculosis and soon after suffered a nervous breakdown. After the doctors could no longer help the former lieutenant and passionate adventurer, he went into the hands of a controversial healer. And sure enough, the unorthodox treatment, based on a mixture of prayer and fasting, seemed to work, and Maurice recovered. During a short fast in the Black Forest, the Brit came across a report on the 1924 Mount Everest expedition. Despite the fact that George Mallory and Andrew Irvine never returned from their trip, Maurice made a fundamental decision. He would climb the highest mountain and conquer the earth single-handedly. The fact that he had no mountaineering experience didn't seem to bother him. He also planned to take a plane to the Himalayas, although he had never seen the inside of a cockpit at the time. Although Maurice initially had great difficulty getting the machine under control due to an old war injury, the flying hours paid off and he actually managed to land in India unscathed. As a result of a number of bans from the local authorities, the Brit had to scrap his original plans time and time again. Together with a few helpers, Maurice finally made it to Tibet in April 1934, disguised as a mute worshipper. After settling into a monastery there and befriending several monks, it was time for the challenging ascent. After the first attempt fell through due to bad weather, the second should lead to a long-awaited ascent to the summit. Unfortunately, Maurice had left behind some of his items on the first attempt, some of which, like the crampons, he couldn't find. After one of his helpers explained to him how to use an ice axe, Maurice had never done anything like this before. The amateur climber is said to have set out on his own on May 29th to put his plan into action. His body was discovered on July 9th, 1935. During the salvage, however, the British expedition team encountered some strange circumstances. Accordingly, no sleeping bag could be found near the dead man. In addition, the body was less than 200 meters from the nearest food depot. He was even within shouting distance of Camp 3, where two helpers are said to have been waiting for him. Ultimately, his body was wrapped in a tarpaulin and thrown into a crevasse. To this day, individual bone fragments from the overambitious mountaineer appear off the beaten track from time to time. Mallory and Irvine to this day, the British Mount Everest expedition of 1924 is overshadowed by one central question. Did George Mallory and Andrew Irvine reach the summit or not? After the two attempts had been aborted, the third and final one resulted in the disappearance of those men, who were to become the first climbers of Everest. Mallory's body was discovered and identified in 1999. There is still no trace of Irvine. Later, Noel O'Dell, who was in charge of the expedition equipment at the time, stated that the two missing people very likely reached the summit. Accordingly, he would like to have recognized two black dots in the distance. However, it should be mentioned at this point that the place where he claims to have seen the two varied again and again. The information that Odell made about the weather also proved to be contradictory. Finally, in 1986, he admitted he wasn't sure which tier of the summit pyramid he'd spotted Irvine and Mallory on. The camera that the mountaineers carried with them at the time could possibly provide an answer to the question of how to climb the summit. However, this was not discovered on Mallory's body, so it is that Tanzig Norgay and Edmund Hillary are still considered the first official conquerors of Mount Everest. According to their own statement, the two men found no traces on the summit in 1953 that would indicate a previous ascent. The Trace of Man as is well known, 
We humans do not exactly have the best influence on our blue home planet, because in the meantime, we have actually achieved something that we really shouldn't be proud of. We have polluted the lowest point of the sea and the highest peak on Earth with our garbage. In 2018, researchers in the Mariana Trench came across a commercially available plastic bag. Mount Everest has been considered the highest garbage dump in the world since the 1950s. The basic rule is, wherever a person puts their foot, they leave their mark. Anyone who takes care of these traces afterwards, however, is on a completely different page. This is why the slopes of the mighty massif have been home to old plastic bottles, cigarette butts, packaging, and even empty oxygen bottles for some time now. For a long time, however, it was unclear whether the previously untouched snow world was now also contaminated with microplastics. The analysis of snow samples recently answered this question with a sad yes. In addition to fibers made by nylon, acrylic, and polyester, the experts also detected residues of polypropylene. It is very likely that all this contamination comes from the equipment and clothing of the climbers. In detail, not a single one of the 11 snow samples taken from an altitude of over 8,000 meters was free of microplastics. Pemba Dorje Sherpa Pemba Dorje Sherpa may not be the first man to climb Mount Everest, but he is the fastest. On May 23, 2003, he accomplished the feat of reaching the summit in just 12 hours and 46 minutes. But just three days later, this record would be beaten again by more than two hours. Of course, Pemba couldn't let that sit, which is why the then 27-year-old climbed the summit on May 21, 2004 in eight hours and 10 minutes. However, since he was traveling alone that day and there was therefore no one who could confirm the time, the record was initially doubted but later officially confirmed by the Nepalese Ministry of Culture, Tourism and Civil Aviation. Yeti Basically, if something like a Yeti really exists, it has to leave some kind of trace. And indeed, the fabled snowman, who figures prominently in Sherpa folklore, appears to be hanging around near Mount Everest. When Eric Shipton tried to climb the world's highest mountain in 1951, he photographed some strange, strikingly large footprints at an altitude of 6,000 meters. Edmund Hillary and Tenzing Norgay also want to have seen such marks on their ascent. Norgay's father is said to have seen the Yeti with his own eyes. Invisible Visitors Death climbs with them. So far, more than 300 people have died trying to climb Mount Everest, and only very few of their bodies have so far been discovered. As a result of the countless deaths, some people are convinced that the restless souls of the dead are still on Everest, an eerie notion that should be supported by some chilling testimonials. Let's just take a look at the frightening statements that the summit conquerors Dougal Haston and Doug Scott once made. During their ascent in 1975, the two men were forced to spend the night in the death zone. After the climbers dug into the snow, none of them knew if they would make it until the next morning. With oxygen running low, supplies running low, and their butane heater running low, Haston and Scott were expecting the worst when the unbelievable happened. Both climbers reported sensing a third presence near them. A noticeable warmth even emanated from the unknown. But that's not all. The invisible visitor supposedly explained to the two desperate men how they managed to stay alive. Surprisingly, other climbers have also reported very similar incidents. Marine Fossils Anyone looking at the mighty Mount Everest might think that the mighty massive has towered over the landscape since the beginning of time. However, this does not seem to be entirely correct. At least, that is what the numerous marine fossils that have been found on the roof of the world indicate. Some believers in Christ see the discovery of the ancient fossilized remains as evidence of the deluge described in the Bible. On the other hand, the explanation that the scientists have already in this regard seems to be significantly less religious. Accordingly, the fossils, some of which are 420 million years old, were pushed up together with Mount Everest as a result of plate tectonics. Russian Expedition in 1952 
This story is very strange and has never been explained, even after more than 50 years have passed. According to historians, back in 1952, the Russian government sponsored an expedition to the summit of Mount Everest. If the ascent was successful, it would have marked the first time anyone had successfully made it to the top of the mountain. The idea was for a small team of climbers to reach the summit and place photos of Lenin and Stalin at the top, with Russia claiming this as a win for the entire country. We know that the hikers made it a long way up the mountain. We don't know for sure how long it took them to reach the top, but they nearly made it there. Though as the hikers were beginning the final leg of their journey to the summit, they disappeared. They were just a few hours away from claiming their place in world history but they vanished off the face of the earth, never to be seen or heard from again. What makes the story so strange is that their bodies have never been recovered. On top of this, none of their equipment has ever been found either. By all means, it seems as though the expedition never even took place, and that is certainly a possibility. We know that Russian government doesn't shy away from controversy. When asked about the expedition, the government refused to admit whether or not the trek actually took place. It's possible that the trip truly did not happen, and that the government refused to speak out about it for fear of controversy popping up about the deaths of these brave men. However, if it is true, why have none of the bodies or belongings ever been recovered? On the flip side of this, the trek may never have happened at all, and the government was just puffing up its feathers to make itself look better than the other countries from the time. We really don't know for sure, and it's possible this strange mystery will remain unsolved forever. Corpses by the Wayside the highest mountain in the world has a macabre nickname. It is also often called the largest open-air cemetery in the world. Since Edmund Hillary and Tenzing Norgay first scaled Mount Everest in 1953, many climbers have followed them. Some stayed on the mountain. The upper part of the mountain is also called the death zone. The oxygen content is only a third of sea level. Barometric pressure makes the weight feel 10 times heavier. The combination of both causes the climbers to become exhausted very quickly. They will often begin to feel sluggish and disoriented. Organs can be extremely stressed. A maximum of 48 hours in these extreme situations is possible, and many climbers die. Usually they are left in the exact place where they found death. They serve as a reminder to other mountaineers. Anyone who finds death in the death zone cannot be recovered. The weather conditions, the terrain, and the lack of oxygen make it all but impossible to recover the body. The Garbage Problem Climbers who climb Mount Everest say that you don't actually need a trail map to get to the base camp. It is enough to follow the trail of garbage. More and more people are climbing the world's highest mountain, bringing a lot of gear with them. Much of it stays behind on the mountain. Volunteer teams try to get the mountains of rubbish under control. Plain junk, human waste, oxygen canisters, torn tents, plastic and leftover mountaineering gear – that's what's left on the way to the summit. The increasing global warming also ensures that the bodies of mountaineers who died on the mountain are also found. However, the clearing actions are only a temporary solution. As soon as the mountaineering season starts again in the Himalayas, the tons of garbage will come back. There are various programs that Nepal wants to use to solve the garbage problem on Mount Everest. There's a garbage tax, for example, but it's ridiculously low, given the price of a Mount Everest expedition. What do you think of the amazing incidents and discoveries that have already been recorded on Mount Everest? As always, let us know your thoughts, suggestions, and feedback on today's video in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to stay up to date from now on. Finally, please take a look at the other videos on our channel, which we have linked for you here in the credits. And with that, thanks for watching, have a good one, and see you next time!